My name is Sarah Harris, and I'll be presenting today with my colleague, Danny Chaver Martinez, about RV FPGA Complete Course in Understanding Computer Architecture. So RISC V FPGA, or RV FPGA for short, is a teaching package that provides a set of instruction tools and labs that show how to first target a commercial RISC V system to an FPGA, and then how to analyze, modify, and even add more functionality to that system. The package is being developed by Imagination Technologies and its academic and industry partners, and the system is based on Ships Alliance's Swerve Ulf system on ship, which in turn is based on Western Digital's uh, commercial Swerve EH1 core. The RV FPGA package includes materials for a one to two semester course targeted at undergraduates, and uh, it's basically in two sections. The first section is based on programming and I.O., and the second on the RISC-V core and memory systems. The software and hardware required for running RV FPGA are uh, Xilinx's uh, Vivado and Platform I.O., which is an extension of uh, Visual Studio Code. The hardware is the is Digilance Nexus A7 FPGA board, or equivalently, um, Nexus 4 DDR board. And um, the, again, the core and SOC are the Swerve EH1 and Swerve Wolf. So the Swerve EH1 core, this commercial core is a superscalar core, a 32-bit um, superscalar core with dual issue nine-stage pipeline. It includes the compressed and multiply divide extensions and it has separate instruction and data memories that are tightly coupled to the core or closely coupled memories. It has a, an instruction cache but no data cache, a four-way set associative instruction cache programmable interrupt controller and core debug unit, and also um, system buses, either Axi4 or HB Lite. The Swerve Ulf system on chip uses, again, the Swerve EH1 core, and in addition to that, includes boot ROM, UART, uh, system controller with uh, general purpose IO and SPI controllers. It also includes an Axi to wishbone bridge. The RV FPGA system then is built on top of the Swerve Ulf core and it includes access to the peripherals on the Nexus A7 FPGA board, um, including a light DRAM controller um, and the peripherals on the board include DDR2 memory, USB connection, SPI flash memory, and LEDs and switches. So included in the RV FPGA materials are the Getting Started Guide, which shows how to install the tools and download RV FPGA on th onto the uh, FPGA board and load and run programs on RV FPGA. It also includes instructions how to simulate um, RV FPGA. So the Quick Start Guide is a, a kind of abbreviated version of the Getting Started Guide. And then the last set of materials are the RV FPGA labs that I mentioned earlier, showing how to build the Vivado project, program and see an assembly, um, add peripherals to the RV FPGA system, and then both analyze and modify the core and memory systems. The contents of the RV FPGA Getting Started Guide include an overview of the instruction set architecture and the hardware, and then again, instructions how to install the tools and run programs on RV FPGA, both in hardware and in simulation. RV FPGA Labs is divided in four parts. We next explain each of them in detail. Part 1 shows how to build a Vivado project and how to program the RISC-V processor. It contains five labs, in addition to an introductory lab that shows an overview of the labs and tools that we'll use. Lab 1 shows how to build a Vivado project and how to perform simulations in Verilator. Labs 2 and 3 are about C programming and assembly programming respectively. They both start with an example program, then show how boot code is implemented, and then propose some exercises. Lab 4 analyzes function calls in RISC-5, and finally Lab 5 shows how to merge C and assembly code. Part 2 analyzes input-output systems. It starts by introducing them and by showing how a GPIO controller works. Then, Lab 7 shows how to build a 7-segment display controller. Lab 8 gives an introduction to RV FPGA interrupt support and then uses interrupt-driven input-output in several exercises. Lab 9 shows how timers work, 
And finally, Lab 10 explains serial buses such as SPI, I2C, and UART, and then uses an SPI onboard accelerometer available on the Nexus A7 board. Part 3 analyzes the Swerve RIS-5 core that we use in this course. It contains labs 11 to 15 and shows the core structure, how instruction flows through the pipeline, how hazards are handled in this processor. It also asks the user to implement new instructions and execute them on the board. It shows how the branch predictor available on Swerve works and finally, it analyzes superscalar processing. Finally, part 4 analyzes RISC-V memory systems. It includes labs 6, 16 to 20 and shows the operation of the memory hierarchy, how to modify the cache so that we can use different cache sizes, configurations and policies, how does the cache controller work, and also how are instruction closely coupled memory and data closely coupled memory implemented in SWERF. We now show an RVFPGA demo where we will download the system onto the board using Vivado and then we'll run a simple RIS-5 assembly program on RVFPGA using Platform.io. Here you can see the Nexus A7 board its FPGA is empty yet, and for programming it, we're going to use Vivado. We select the proper bit stream and download it onto the FPGA, and you will see that the board changes. Now the FPGA contains the system on chip. Next, we want to run a program on this system on chip. We first release the board in Vivado, and we use Visual Studio Code with Platform.io. This environment allows you to do many things, such as inspecting the variables of the program, the CPU registers, memory, and many other things. But now we're only going to execute our program, which is written in RIS-5 assembly. For running it, we click on this button. This compiles the program, and then downloads it onto the board. This program shows an ascending count on the 7 segment displays and the switches state is shown on the LEDs. So if we change any of the switches you will see how the um, corresponding LED changes accordingly. In conclusion RVFPGA provides a comprehensive introductory RISC-V course that is hands-on, easily accessible, and freely distributed that targets um, FPGAs, which are low cost and often readily available at institutions. After completing the RVFPGA course, students will have a working commercial RISC-V processor and system, as well as a working RISC-V ecosystem that they know how to use, they understand it, and they also know how to modify it. The first group of RVFPJ materials will be released in November of 2020, um, including the first section of RVFPJ labs. The second section will be released parts three and four in quarter three of 2021. And then a master's level system on chip design course will also be released in March 2021. Um, it will be uh, the materials will be provided in English and Chinese, Spanish and Japanese will follow. And a uh, recommended textbook is Digital Design and Computer Architecture, Risk 5 Edition, which will be released in 2021 by David Harris and, uh, and myself. The Imagination University program, IUP, has a track record of developing um, strong educational materials, including the MIPS FPGA program, which is similar to our VFPGA, the targeted a MIPS processor. This program was launched in April 2015 and engaged 800 universities worldwide and it was a, a winner of the Electra um, Award for Educational Support. So how do you get RVFPGA? Um, register now for um, the Imagination University program with the link shown here, and you'll receive updates and notifications when the releases are made. You can also connect with the director of the IUP, Robert Owen. We'd also like to acknowledge the contributions of our sponsors and supporters.
Thank you for listening and we'll open it up for any questions.